Hello, here's a new beginner tutorial for Blender and PBR texturing. First of all, let's get some textures. And from where do we get them? Textures.com. I'm here in the section of newly released PBR textures and fell in love with the medieval brick wall. Wow, look at these bricks. Very nice. I have some credits left and we just need three textures. The base color, the albedo, I download it to a folder called IMG. Then I need the normal map for the details and height information. And the last one is the roughness. Just a black and white image that tells us where the model is more reflective or rough. Okay, that's all we need and I don't want to call it the running gag. It's sad we have to remove the cube again. Because I want to have a floor so I add a plane. I go to edit mode, press S to scale it up. And when you hold the control key pressed, while doing that, you snap to the grid. A simple mesh, so it's simple to unwrap, press U and choose unwrap. And we are ready to add the textures. To do this, I go to the texture paint mode, because in this mode it's easy to add slots. I'll come back to this in a moment. Let's open a new window and select the Shader Editor. In this editor we are going to create the material for the floor. First of all we go to the Material tab and press the New button just to create a new material and you see the principal shader, the default shader, is added to the Shader Editor. Ok, the first texture that I want to add is the albedo, the base color. And now you see why I changed to the texture paint mode, because in this we can just go to the settings and here we can add texture slots. In my opinion this is a very comfortable and easy way to add images to the material. The first one is for the base color. I don't change the name and also keep the settings as they are and press OK. And here you see the texture is created and automatically assigned to the base color input of the principal shader. As I switch to the look dev mode, the scene looks pretty nice. And this is also because I activated some effects, you see this here on the render tab. I activated ambient occlusion and bloom. Ok, now let's load the texture, the albedo image for the bricks, to the assigned image texture node. Here we go and in the viewport we can already see the bricks. Of course it looks flat, there's no light, there's no height information, but we are going to add this now. First I go to object mode and press shift and A to add a light and I choose a point light. Move it a bit upwards then increase the intensity. You find this here in the lights tab. That's perhaps a bit too much, I set it to 200. But still, even when we move it around by pressing the G key, it looks really flat and boring. So it's time to add the next slot. Again set the mode to texture paint. And then here in the slots, I select normal. Again I keep everything as is, just press OK. And the cool thing is that the nodes, the normal map, and the image texture is created for you and attached to the principal shader. Now we can open the normal map. Alright, and this looks interesting but also a bit strange. And this is because the color space is set to sRGB, but it has to be set to non-color data. Color space has to be set to non-color data for every map except the base color. sRGB means gamma encoding and we don't want to have this for these maps. Ok, this looks pretty nice and not flat anymore, especially when I move the light here over the surface. Ok, but the whole area of the texture has the same roughness now. But to make it look more believable and realistic, we have to add the roughness map. Again add a texture slot, this time the roughness. Again I make no changes, it is just a black and white image that I open now for the created node. 
and also check that the color space is set to non-color data. Alright, here is the image, I open it and you see this looks amazing, much more detailed. And again I select the light and press G to move it along the surface. Ok, now let me show you one more thing and this is a feature of Blender 2.90. Let's suppose I want to increase the size of the plane, of the floor. So I would go to edit mode, press S to scale it up. And what happens then is that the images are scaled with the mesh, which is not always what you want. Or let's select this edge and move it along the Y axis. Again, in this case, not the desired effect. So let me show you an option here in the toolbar, which is new in Blender 2.90 and this is named Correct Face Attributes. So check this and then let's see what we really wanted. I change the mesh and the UVs are adjusted. I press the Ctrl key to snap to the grid and the same I do for the other sides. And this makes mesh editing with UV maps really comfortable and intuitive. Then you end up with a material like that, that you can for instance use in your games or renders. Alright, this was the first part for texturing with Blender. I want to do more tutorials for this topic, go more into the details. If you want to see more, please tell me if you do. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and also follow me on my Instagram, Twitter or Facebook. Support me by becoming a member or patron and I'll see you in the next one.